Hello internet, CJ with you again for more lock sport type stuff. I've had been having a bit of a back and forth with, well not really a back and forth, but you know, uh, there's been some discussion in the Overclockers Australia uh, lock sport thread since I posted my previous video about, hey, finally my Swix showed up. Um, this is a pocket everyday carry multi-blade lock pick kit we'll we'll get into that in a minute <laughs> um so another sort of unscripted off the cuff um video sort of here to talk about the actual thing and some of its flaws and some of its good points as they such as they might be and uh yeah it's all pretty rough so, you know, apologies for any waffle and whatever. All care, no responsibility, personal res personal opinions only, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, moving on. So here is the actual thing. I, I haven't figured out how to lock off the autofocus on my, on my phone for video, sorry. So I'll try to keep this in focus as best I can and not swear too much about it. So it's a 3D printed body. It has a lanyard hole. It has 12 different pick profile blades it has a top of keyway slash bottom keyway turning tool held in by magnets on each side with a little dish cut out for you to extract them and voila there's the magnets you see so it's got two of those it's got a recess on the top which holds a couple of traditional you know, bent wiper insert style turning tools, torque wrenches, and this little plastic bit that goes in there. And here's the other, here's the other smaller profile turning tool. Oh, bloody hell, this is going badly already. There you go. There they are. And yeah, so there's a, like a pocket in the top here and he, that lets you kind of store up to four of those. Right. But if you just whack this one in here, then the small one falls out. So you've got to kind of put this little 3D printed or molded insert in. And then that goes in there and kind of snaps in and then it all kind of gets held in place. But what happens when you when you want to use this turning tool and you turn it upside down? What's going to happen to... Yeah, so you see, so you see where we're going here. Okay, we've got the two turners held in by magnets. Oh. Yeah, because that... This magnet here is... Like they're obviously held in with a dab of super glue, and this one isn't flush, so you know it snaps into place nicely. I actually saw a comment from one of the backers on the actual Kickstarter thread going, "I like this feature because it makes it really easy to get the top tool." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, man, but like that's sort of not like that's what this notch is, f you know? It's not." Like, well done for putting a thumbs up on the situation, but, you know, positive spin on it. But that's not ideal, is it? You know, really? It's, anyway. So there's so there's that. You can you can see, obviously, that, that like, if, if that was a panel gap on a premium automobile, you'd probably be a bit annoyed. I mean, this is just a 3D printed bit of plastic, but... She a little bit flexy. These hex heads are um they're earning their pay, man. These these little hex head screws holding the body together. They're they're earning their living, those those guys, I think. And you know, look, the the the, the steel spring that holds the actual pick blade, so so in order Look, I'm going to, full, full disclosure here, I haven't actually watched, there's a video that shows how you're supposed to get the pick blades out and use the thing, like a, a tutorial video. I haven't actually watched that because I'm going to be dead set honest with you. This thing, it can, if I cannot, 
dropping it in the middle of the video is not a great way to illustrate my point. But if I cannot just pull this thing out of the packet and go, oh yeah, okay, so there's the pick blades, there's the turners, there's the other turners. Um, I just grab the, the blade out that I want and it, oh, that's a bit stiff. Hang on. Can I, hang on. How do I get, ah, oh, fuck me, okay. Um, what if I just grab them all it? Oh yeah, no, okay. This is my process, literally. This is what I've done when I got the thing out. Okay, so now I've got them all out at nine degrees against the spring tension. And then I kind of fan them out a bit and I work out, okay, I want to rake this padlock. So I'm going to use a, let's use the quad cycloid rake for this padlock. Quad cycloid wave rake. There we go. So I'll, I'll kind of bend that out of the way and I'll, I'll snap that down. And then I'll kind of line these up again. Uh, wait, uh, wait, hang on. Are some of those tips crossed over or are they all? No, they're all square. Okay, yep. Snap those into place. And now my quad cycloid rake, wave rake is out and ready to use. Kind of, it's a little bit wobbly. I hope that lock's pretty loose as I try to rake it because this is going to be flopping around all over the place. And I had, I managed not to bite my fingers or cut myself as I put these back in because they're quite, they're quite sharply edged. <clears throat> you see the issue, right? Like you've got 12 pick blades in one little unit, but Honestly, it feels like they're just jamming a little bit of corrosion on the spring there. But who cares? It's just like a tool steel spring. It's extremely stiff. There's a lot of spring tension there. But somehow, after going through this whole process of getting them out at 90 degrees, so, okay, I just want I just want a diamond out. Let, let's just try my diamond. <laughs> uh, okay, DeForest diamond. Here we go. Let, let's grab that out. We'll snap him down. Oh, oh that's really stiff. Um, these are loose. That, so these are bearing the tension. Are they just going to... No, hang on. I better, I better line them all up so they don't... Because I've had problems with the tips crossing over and them all binding up in here. So let's just... Okay, they're all aligned. Snapped in. I haven't bent any of them this time. And there's my DeForest Diamond. It's pretty reasonably stiff, but there's still a couple of mil of play of it wobbling back and forth. Not sure if you can see that. So you see what I mean? Like it's <clears throat> it's all a great idea. It's it, like lots of great ideas in the in the concept, but the implementation is just yeah, like that's. I want to just be able to kind of, I don't know, I'm a, I've never used a multi, a jackknife type pick, before, pick set before, so maybe this is just what you'd have to do. You just have to grab out the one that you want and then fold that one. But, oh, hang on, that's grabbing that. No, no, no. Now I want to grab my deep hook. Where's the deep hook? It's somewhere in the middle. You can repin it. There's see a little hole here. You get, there's this little pin here that you can use to, you know, just to punch out the, the, I don't know. I haven't. I haven't watched the video. If I ever want to re rearrange these, I'll watch the video. But you know what I'm saying. I'm trying to work on this, work with it, just as something that you just get and go. Okay, I understand the basic concept here. I'm just going to work out how it works. And you'd think that'd be pretty straightforward. But I've I've kind of nearly snapped my fingers a couple of times. I've nearly cut myself on some sharp edges a couple of times. I just want this deep hook out here. All right. This is the one that I've been using to practice on my six pin cutaway schlag schlag lock that i uh, got as a backer reward right to their credit they did send that and the various uh, spool and serrated security pins with additional springs and some broken key extractors and some um, padlock you know combi combi padlock decoder shims as well or you know um yeah so and a plug follower to take the schlag apart with so schlag schlag i keep calling it schlag i don't know why it's schlag I, I think you know and here's the here's the key for the blah 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, uh, uh. Okay, yeah. Fuck's sake. Come on. Okay, yeah. So, you know, they milled out the cylinder properly and it, you know, that's, that does what it's supposed to do and I've had a go at taking the shim off and, and repinning it and, and, you know, mucking about with it. So, you know, that's, that's everything that I, I was promised I got. But the actual thing itself is just awkward to use, man. It's just awkward. Okay, realign them. See, it click. Yep, yeah, one of them nearly. That, should, that looks good. Snap. But I've got this wobbliness here. You know, as you're trying to, the the blades themselves, the material, like high yield thirty ten stainless or whatever it is, they're they're, they're excellent. I mean, I, I don't feel like they're going to break or, but I'm worried about just how much tension that spring's putting in the whole arrangement. And at some point, these screws are just going to separate, and yeah. So, and then when you want to put that away, you try snapping that back in there. <laughs> No, go, okay, buddy. You're gonna have to. No, you got to pull them out like this, and then fold them all up flat. See? Yep. See? They're all kind of wanting to cross over. Now well, let's just fan them out and fix that. Have we got that right? Got that right. Hang on. <clears throat> no. See? There we go. <clears throat> and then snap them back in, like. It's hardly covert, you know what I mean? When you're standing under a sodium vapour floodlight behind somebody's back door and going, uh, hang on, uh, which, what pick am I going to, oh, wait a second, oh, yeah, no, no, officer, it's all right, I'm just choosing which profile I need to, to, to rake this lock with. Yeah, I want that one. Okay, let's just, yeah, and then, and then pull these. I mean, maybe, again, maybe I'm just being a noob and this is the way that all of these jackknife-style picks work, but it just feels awkward, man, and like I'm going to cut my finger on the edge of this at any time. And The turning tool is pretty good, I think, but as another commenter pointed out who got one of these on, on Overclocks Australia, that they're very rough edge. You want to break those probably a little bit. and You know, it's, I haven't had a lot of luck using this to SPP that yet. I'll be I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> I'm not a good lock picker, so that's not exactly to be taken as a statement of, you know, effectiveness of the actual tool itself. I'm talking more about the usability of the thing. But anyway. So the yeah, I mean look, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty happy. I'm gonna have fun playing around with it, don't get me wrong. And it's a kind of neat little thing to have, and it's sort of unique, and you know, blah blah blah. But you know, uh, okay, I'm going to use this top tool to work on my lock, and then oh, hang on, wait. Before I've even got it in the keyway, this little thing's fallen out, and oh, look now, my other top tool's fallen out. And, um, maybe I'll just stick with these ones, and maybe I'll fuck these off completely, and just leave that empty, and just. Yeah, so anyway, I'm glad, I'm really glad that the, uh, you know, project creator came through with actually delivering on the product uh, with the help of the people that assisted him. But yeah, it's, it's not, a, it's not a, it's not a product that's ready for market. Let's put it that way. So it, it'll remain as a bit of a novelty. I'll probably use it a couple of times or have fun playing around with it as an alternative to, to picking a a lock that I've picked with other tools or something like that. But anyway, so there's the swick, ladies and gentlemen. Full, uh, a full breakdown from the perspective of a noob who just kind of got it and went, oh, okay, uh, how do I work this out? Anyway, there you go. Hope you found it interesting. Cheers. Have a nice one.